Hey guys, how's it going? Sergio here, and we'll be traveling next week. So I wanna go over a few of the tips and tricks that I do when I'm packing for international travel, show you guys what it is that I pack, how I pack it, which I'll just be bringing as much of this stuff as possible, and uh, just hoping for the best. Yeah, we'll just go from there. Essentially, I'm going to the States for a portrait shoot, and it's important for me to have a variety of equipment so that I can shoot as much as possible so that they can have this content that they'll be using for a long time so I don't have to see them as often. You know, we kind of cram in as much as we can. In order to do that, I need to have a lot of equipment that we might just use end up, end up using for one shot or two shots, and sometimes you'll want to rent equipment once you're over there. Essentially, the budget for this one is that it's big enough for me to go to the States and shoot this, but not necessarily big enough for me to rent everything over there and take on the, extra, the additional cost. Let's, let's start packing. I'm just gonna grab this bag first right here, just cause it's uh, small, it's gonna be easy to pack up. Essentially all I put in here are my two 8600s. Reason for that being, I just like having everything split up as much as possible when I can. When it comes to traveling on planes and airlines, it's a little bit of a different story, but since I'll be driving this time around, I can kind of get away with just being extremely organized, or at least as much as possible, and not have to worry about how many bags I have or how much weight I have, etc. Let's just show you guys right here. This bag here, I basically just leave one divider in the middle and I put both flashes on each side. I'm also gonna bring these uh, spill kills. We'll set these aside for later. Batteries are charged, so I'm just gonna leave it at that for now, but I'm also gonna bring a charger, obviously. So first flash is in, there we go. Always important to be somewhat organized, especially when you're traveling. This is just gonna help make sure that I don't forget anything, I have everything together, everything's in place, and I just like to keep similar things together in the same bag. So two 8600s in here, both batteries. What I'm gonna do now is I put them in the front, the front pouch over here. By the way, this is a low pro bag. Man, I've had this bag for so long. I've had multiple iterations of this bag. And literally every time I buy this bag, I find it on Facebook Marketplace for like 50, 60 bucks because people buy a backpack for camera gear and assume that that's like the smallest that they need or something. I don't know, but they just never end up filling the bag. They just need to get rid of it because they, they spent $400 on a bag because the camera shop told them they had to. And they don't realize, they realize that they don't have this much equipment, so it ends up going on Marketplace. So winner for me. So yeah, like I was saying, front, let's put the charger in here. I have a bit of a charging station on my rack over here that honestly is something I've always wanted to have. It's just been great. Um, if anyone has the chance to set themselves up a little shelf with some batteries and some chargers, it goes a long way. So I'll put that in the front and I do have another flash I'm gonna bring, but I'm gonna put that in the uh, in the other camera bag. Or actually, a couple more flashes I'll bring, but I'm putting the in the other camera bag. So this is decently full. I'll put that aside for now. I'm gonna open up my onstage cart here for you guys. So this is about packed up. So as you can see, it's pretty small, it's super easy. It's super portable. Since I'm driving, I will be bringing as much stuff as possible. And this rack really has saved my back hundreds of times um, over the last couple years. This thing is incredible. All in all, this is a very easy cart to change if I have to. Uh, which I think I will be doing. These front wheels are starting to go. Otherwise, this thing is fantastic. I think it has a max rating of like three, 400 pounds, but I've never heard a squeak come from it. Yeah, get yourself a cart. So essentially, you've already seen me pack my lighting bag if I edited this in chronological order. Next up, we're gonna do the Pelican case over here. This is a 1510, 1530, 1510. The one that like fits as a carry-on. I've had this thing for a long time. It's been honestly, ah! It's honestly been all over the world with me and it's been on beaches, it's been in frigid climates, it's been all over. I trust this thing, you guys could too. And what we're gonna be doing actually is this is mostly gonna be the camera that's filming me, which is a my whole video rig essentially. Uh, so it's gonna be my audio, my monitor, uh, the rig, the cage, all that. So that's going in here as well, however, so since I'll be packing it up later. Um, I also wanna bring in my rig building pouch, which just kinda has all my tools and all of the little things, odds and ends that I need for the video specific equipment. I use this, actually this is the, um, these are the legs off of my gimbal, the Ronin, I don't know what it is, RSC or something like that. And what I do is I ended up, I, I just kinda like screw this to the bottom of my cage on my video rig and it creates like just the smallest perfect little tripod. So I use this all the time with my little video thing, just keeps it a nice stable place to uh, put down. Well, I do have the gimbal, I'm just not gonna bring it this time around. I don't think I need it. It just helps feel a little bit more natural when you got a little bit of the camera movement and, and I've got a tripod as well if I need some stable shots. So I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Nowadays it's a bit easier to film uh, handheld I think because cameras are 
honestly still stable. Lenses are stabilized. Uh, we've got software that can stabilize the footage further. We can shoot in 4K, so we shoot extra wide, then we can crop it. Like it's 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 very doable handheld. You don't really need all the gimbals and stuff. So um, that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna shoot by hand. Is there anything else that I need? Oh, okay. So I'll bring uh, these guys here. This is a little pouch of five batteries for the monitor that I'm watching myself on, essentially. If I keep looking up from the camera, it's because I'm looking at the big screen that shows my own face. So I'm sorry about that, but that's what's going on. All right, and last thing that goes in the video case, it's gonna be just the uh, charger for the batteries. I'll go in here, and as well, like I was saying, I'm gonna put the rest of the camera rig in here once I'm done filming this video. So, all right, so that was the Pelican case, that was the video rig, and the lights so far. So my camera bag of choice is the Think Tank Soft Airport Roller, big enough to carry all the stuff that I need. It's got the organizational pouches that I want. It's got a spot for my MacBook. And if ever, by the way, so this is a little, so this is a little bonus trick, I guess, uh, for traveling. If ever you need to have a smaller, more incognito bag rather than rolling it around to the airport and being like, look at how big and fancy all my stuff is. Um, you can what? just pop this down, nice. take those straps off and wear it like a regular backpack. Now, I know it's a big and awkward looking backpack, but when you're checking into the airport, having a backpack on and a carry get and a carry bag, or even just the backpack on, they're less likely to be like, "Ooh, that looks big." It just—it's a backpack, so they don't really think about it when they're uh, checking you in. So just be mindful if that, if that is an option that you need. Um, I've used it a couple times, not often, but I have used it and it is uh, useful. But yeah, I do like the very soft rollerblade wheels that still go into this day. And uh, yeah, so let's just pack this guy up. Let's, so we're gonna bring one 8200 just to have a small controllable light, uh, as well as additional to the 28600s. And I've got some spare batteries in there. I'm gonna bring a spare charger as well. So that's the first thing. Let's just go through all the lenses now. Um, 3314, check out the review. This lens is so good. I actually replaced the, what was it, 30, 35? The 35 F2 that I had before, um, which was fine. It was cute, it was fine. It, was, it, it just wasn't spectacular, um, which is not necessary. But shooting with this 1.4, even at F8, um, is like, oh yeah, that's what detail is. You know, it's, it really is fantastic. Uh, 50 to 140, zoom lens. We'll be doing some outdoor portraits as well, so I do like having the 70 to 200, or the 50 to 140. Also, since I'll be shooting video, this is a optically stabilized lens. On an optically stabilized sensor, I can just create some really fantastic long lens shots uh, that are pretty unique, I think, in, in, in video nowadays. I think everything is always shot so wide or from a drone from a million miles away. So it's nice to have something tight, some compression, um, I, I, something I enjoy. So 50 to 140. So next up, I've got the camera. We'll take out the trigger. It's got some pretty fresh batteries in here, so I don't, I'm not even gonna bring some extra double A's, but they, they last quite a while. Regular camera, we've got the X-Pro3, my 80 mil. Funny enough, um, look, so this macro as well. I was actually, I sold a lens on Facebook Marketplace a few weeks ago. Buyer was like, oh, you don't have a lens cap for it. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. I have misplaced it. It's so rare that I use lens caps and it's in looking for that lens cap. I ended up finding a few others and there's some that I still haven't found because I don't use lens caps. It's pretty useless in my opinion, at least in my 12 year experience, I haven't noticed any difference. The uh, Outer coating on this is harder than the plastic that you're putting on top of it. So just be careful with your stuff. Don't put it in the same pocket as you would put keys, I guess. Like don't put keys in your bag, but even at that, like what are you doing? Are you purposely trying to scratch the lens? Like it, don't worry, it'll be fine. Just be ever so slightly mindful about your lenses. But uh, yeah, honestly, don't worry about it. Don't worry about lens caps. Don't worry about any of that shit. It really is like pretty much useless. This is the other little flash I was telling you about. So this, <laughs> this thing is so cute. Little pop-up Fuji flash. Um, this is gonna be used, or oh, it's got EFX8, I guess that's the name of the, of the flash. Um, this is gonna be used because I need to do some kind of inconspicuous looking photos, kind of like street photography, but staged essentially. But I wanna be able to be as discreet as I would be if I just was shooting street photography. So I'll be shooting with the X-Pro3, probably the 33, or maybe my 28, and this little guy, just to create a little bit of on-camera flash the uh, very Terry style, Terry Richardson style of photography. So let's just do a little bit of snapshotty stuff like this. We'll put that up there. I'm also gonna come here and grab, since I was just talking about it, the 18, the 28 mil. This little guy, I mean, even if I just, I don't usually often use it for portraits. Sometimes I do, not often. But if, even if I don't use it for portraits, uh, I'm definitely gonna be shooting some street photography here in the state or there in the States when, I'm go, when I go, because I just love being able to explore a new city. Um, I've been there before. I'll 
probably keep it a secret for this video, um, but the next video you'll see will be me there shooting and um, I'll try to do some on camera walk arounds and stuff like that for you guys to see. So stay tuned for that. Just to show you guys exactly what I'll be doing. Uh, I'll be shooting with the GW690 and a couple rolls of film. We'll do some street photography. We'll, do, we'll also do a, bit of, a couple portraits. I've got some fancy portrait 400 uh, back when it was only $16.99. Uh, I think it's actually expired by now. Oh yeah, it is. So we're gonna be shooting on some expired Portra 400. This little professional six by nine. So this will be pretty interesting. It's got a little hot shoe on the top. So I'll just, I'll probably end up mounting my phone. And when I'm walking around or when I'm shooting the portraits, I'll show you guys what it looks like. You guys know me by now, quite obviously enough. We'll be taking a tether cable. I don't shoot without it. No matter where I am, what I'm doing, as much as possible, I'll be shooting tethered because it's just, the better way to go and to ensure that you're actually getting the shots you think you're getting, not just chimping in the back of a three inch screen and being like, oh yeah, yeah, totally got it. Second most important thing, great card. Make sure our colors are accurate. Make sure everyone's skin tone looks good. I've, uh, up here, I've got an extra hard drive that just pretty much lives in here. I've got some business cards and I've got an extra little uh, a spigot. I feel like I always am looking for an extra spigot and it's just good to have them randomly throughout all of your bags. Uh, I've got one on this cart, I've got some over here, and I've got another one I think in the Pelican case and one of the uh, dividers at the top that I didn't show you guys. So there's always a reason to have a spigot on you, so make sure you do. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I think that's it for camera bag, minus the laptop that's gonna go on the top. Move on to the grip and stance bag. So let's do that. Hey guys, editing Sergio here. Um, this video is like 25 or so minutes long. That's way too much of my own face. So I'll just cut it in two and I'll release it in like a day or two. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.